Hello, welcome to another edition of 50 Question Friday. Um, here for, let's see, what is today? August 14th of 2020. Um, as always, if uh, those of you who are here on the live stream app and you are here live, you are welcome to write questions in the question box and when you're live, you can chat with everybody else that's online here, too. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys are all doing well. Today is the first day, I think, in about two months that I feel <laughs> more myself, I think, whatever that is. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely good to be here today. Uh, so, let's go ahead and start with the Sacred Space of the Heart, if we could. And... Hey, good morning, Randy, Stephanie, Linda, Saad, Marie. <laughs> All right. And Malit. Yeah, we got quite a few people on here this morning, and I know a lot of people watch afterwards. So hello, everybody. Um, let's go ahead and drop into the heart space. So you can close your eyes if you wish, and just putting your attention onto your physical heart where your light is. Taking one deep breath, connecting your light to the light of the earth, breathing in that unconditional love and energy from the earth up through the feet and into the heart. Just sinking right down into the earth. Awesome. There you go. The second breath, we connect into source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that, breathing in that energy of creation right into the heart. Then the third breath, breathing in the energies to become that column of light that is grounded to the earth, that is connected to creation, taking in that deep breath into the heart and expanding all those lights together, both up and down. So you are a column of light Awesome. So, all right, we will begin. Uh, our first question today, we're going to start, as usual, with the, the internet. Um, and yeah, we don't get these emails out too soon. So thank you guys for your patience. I know you only have one day to reply by email um, with your questions if you're not on here. Let's see. So the question comes um, in regards to the making the grids. So the question here is about creating grids around the perimeter of the home by burying, burying the quantum grid points. These little guys, just burying them in the earth. And burying one of each of the elementals from the elemental set along with the grid point. Will this grid do anything particular? Do you have any tips on which directions should get which element and what are your thoughts? So as far as, um, well, yeah, certainly. So when you are setting up that grid and you're kind of having the intention right there of working with the elementals, it's just going to hold that space to be able to work with those elementals more. Um, you know, you wouldn't necessarily need to put a physical elemental symbol, you know, like the Hedica for the water or Chisel for the fire, Plymella, Ether, all of those. Um, you know, they're kind of, the energetics of them are included in this grid already um, because they are working with um, Gaia and the Earth elementals. So these guys are already included in there. But if you create a grid system where, you got, where you're using these guys, to me, it feels like it's just going to amplify everything for you to be able to work with those earth elementals. Um, and as far as directions go, when we're working with these newer grids, these newer grids are not connected in the old ways of geomagnetic grid lines. So when we think of grid lines, we think of pyramids and obelisks and, you know, creating those larger geomagnetic grid lines um, that are in relation with the earth and the geomagnetic um, lines of the earth. 
but these grids are not geomagnetic grids so it does not matter the directions north south east west um you know i know there's a lot of shamanic traditions that you know they do utilize the elementals in a directional concept but you know truly when we're working with these grids they are they're quantum um they transcend geomagnetic electromagnetic um you know for directions but if you want to incorporate directions in you certainly can but um you know definitely not needed uh, let's see. So Joe's asking, could you please explain what the water rings improve? What the water rings improve tap water? Have you test this improvement? Um, yes, actually, the gals at the New Science of Water, Dancing with Water, these guys have done extensive tests on the tensor rings. We're actually featured in the second edition of their book here with the tensor rings. Um, so for tap water what they're finding is is that basically when you take two beakers of water in the laboratory and you put them on a balance beam and you put one of them within a tensor field it becomes lighter in weight because it's putting such a spin to the molecules within the water and so it is basically creating ormus um, which ormus is like white powdered gold it is a really fast um, molecular spin rate in a physical substance that actually makes it lighter in weight because it oscillates in and out of physical reality. So what these are doing with water is pretty flipping phenomenal um, for the restructuring. Now for working with water that's why we always suggest that if you get a water ring to try this with tap water. Take two glasses of water set one glass of water within the column of the ring and the other glass not within that column let it sit overnight because you need anywhere from four to six hours of water being within the field for the physical restructuring to occur so overnight you take those two glasses of water the next day you do a taste test and wow you will taste and feel the difference of the water that's set in the ring um, but as far as you know the other science scientific tests things like that yeah the gals that dance with water have done a, a lot of extensive tests with water and the tensor rings um and we do sell the book dancing with water you can also go to dancingwithwater.com um, and they have a lot of great information there too but this is a fantastic book they carry it we carry it they're like 20 bucks great book um so let's see I tell you, um, how do we establish a clear yes or clear no with our dowsing rods? My rod stays smack dab in the center regardless of the yes or no questions I ask. Let me see if I have a dowsing rod sitting here. Um, and no, my apologies, I do not have a dowsing rod here. So the golden fire and light dowsing rods, the golden fire and light rods, um, they they're like the wands in that they have that, um, that, sorry, <laughs> too many things going on here at once. They, they have the ball bearings in the handle. And so those dowsing rods, Tay, they are super sensitive. Okay. The thing with the dowsing rods energetically, when anybody picks them up, they will usually sit there and spin and they'll sit there and spin until they bring the person into balance and alignment. So um, for most people, they'll pick up a dowsing rod. It'll just sit there and spin. Then when it stops, that's when I tell them that they can start to ask the yes or no questions. Um, you know, as far as establishing a clear yes or no with those, Tay, it's... Um, that's a tough one for one for sure got to be in the heart space when you're using those because when you are doing dowsing from here it'll take you down rabbit holes and give you strange answers even when you're in the heart space it can give you strange answers for me dowsing rods will usually take me in very odd directions um it's not that for, for me i like pendulums a lot better but uh they give me more of a straight answer for dowsing rods, especially these for me personally, they like to take me 
around um they never give me a really straight clear but no dowsing rods do for me um but all the professional dowsers out there that i know that are using these dowsing rods yeah they absolutely love them as far as to get the clear yes or no answer tay i'm sorry be in the heart space be a centered and aligned and i'd almost say disconnected um from the rod be soft with it um that's that's what i'm feeling and seeing is that um kind of relax and surrender with it and be soft with it and then see what happens um to me that feels feels right um and then Claire is asking, why don't you make the sacred cubit in the lost cubit? Um, so, you know, and of course we did make the sacred cubit in the lost cubit there for years. And then we did make several other cubits along the way. Um, the 188 megahertz was the empowerment cubit that somebody tried to give Slim one time. Um, and somebody brought in the 188 for us, a master dowser. We found they were the same ones. Um, then the 333 megahertz, we still work with that one. That one's actually the earth resonance rings, the water rings that we make for dancing with water. That's actually the 333 megahertz cubit. Um, you know, the reason that we don't make those ones anymore is basically every cubit that produces a tensor field has a certain bandwidth of, of, of a field that can hold certain bandwidths of frequencies within that field. So let's say you have the 144 megahertz, the sacred qubit. It has a specific, um, it will hold a specific bandwidth within its field. Now, it won't hold a lot of these higher, more soul-based, higher consciousness fields. Um, the sacred qubit is basically a certain bandwidth. Where then, like, let's say the harmony qubit, that balance and harmony qubit, it will have um, a bandwidth that also encompasses the majority of the sacred qubit, but then it has a much higher field where it contain, can contain higher bandwidths of frequency. Um, then a lot of our newer rings, like then we get to the regeneration ring. And the regeneration ring, I'm not even sure if it's containing much for frequencies um, because a lot of the energetics that come through, the fields that come through the regeneration rings are spaces beyond frequency. That space is beyond our physical universe. Um, so it has a different bandwidth. Um, so really that's why we no longer make the sacred and the lost cubit is I can't even handle having a sacred or a lost cubit on me because it is a difference in vibration. Um, the lost cubit is still pretty phenomenal. The sacred cubit is still great to, for those who are with, you know, that, that, that is a match energetically, but I tell you, we are very much pushing the leading edge here and so we are using higher fields um, which I assume that makes sense all right over here to the questions tab uh, please spell the ornament or pennant or ornament that is in tap water oh Ormus. Oh, gosh. Yes. Somebody was asking about the tap water. Ormus. It is, uh, it is O-R-U-M-U-S. Or O-R-M-U-S. And it's an acronym, actually, Ormus. Um, it stands for Orbitally Restructured Monoatomic something something. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can look up Ormus. It's also known as White Powdered Gold, but it's O-R-M-U-S. And they talk about it too at Dancing with Water, um, that orbitally restructured monoatomic. I can never remember it. So anyway, let's see. We have 28 people on at the very moment. And it looks like we are done with questions unless you guys have a few more questions here in regards to the tensor tools or the consciousness work um 
let's see. I was trying to think. We just did a, a little show with Loren Gailey. Um, new Earth One is the name of Loren Gailey's new platform. And, and that was a fun little, we did a one hour um, talk where we did some activations, attunements and things. And then after that, then you have an opportunity to buy for 44 bucks, a little two hour program that we just did here this week too, which we did that two hour program, which was pretty fun. Um, okay. So Christopher's asking, do we need to reactivate the Merkaba once it is set up? No, once your Merkaba field is activated, it will remain activated. Um, things can occur with the Merkaba field, like, um, you know, in it, like I say, it'll always remain active, but it can expand. You can incorporate new geometries. Um, there's a lot of things that can occur with those Merkaba systems. But once your base field is started, you are good to go. And then let's see, Clara asks, why don't you make the harmonizer? You know, never been drawn to make harmonizers. I actually have one of the jigs that um, came from Slim that hold the wires in place to make harmonizers. Um, one, never been guided to make it. Um, I felt that one was always one of Slim's. And at the time, I was the one who, um, you know, Slim came to and his wife, Katrina, at Light Light Technologies, um, bless her heart, truly. She, you know, I did. I wanted to keep things um, right with her her and never make the harmonizer. So that was one of the human reasons why I didn't. The other reason was it was never drawn to. The third reason it was is because I never could figure out how the heck a harmonizer actually worked in the first place. Um, we try, we've tried to refigure, configure that design, but the way that the rings come together, I've just never quite understood how that even creates a tensor field. Um, so, I mean, we've sat here and we've tried to reconfigure harmonizers um, and just never, never have. But, you know, with the harmonizers, you know, even when we first started and we started making the tensor field generators, which, you know, it's the geo, the, the form is actually um, the Genesa crystal is the the geometry of this but we call it the tensor field generator now the tensor field generators we found are more programmable because of the geometry than harmonizers are so in a this specific geometry it will hold amplify and broadcast intentions and um so that's one of the things that we've liked better than these better than the harmonizer Two is that these guys are super simple and easy to make. So they're a lot more, they're, they're a lot cheaper than a harmonizer and they're a lot more versatile. Um, we've had master dowsers who've come up to us and said that, you know, even the, what is it? The $12,000 bathtub harmonizer, the great big one that's gold plated. Um, we've been told by master dowsers that our $50 harmony generator is more of a powerful field than those. Um, I guess it just kind of depends on who's making the harmonizer too. Um, well, yeah, there's a lot of people out there making harmonizers and I'm glad they are. It's, it's, <laughs> it's great, but we've just never been able to do it. Malik, can we do some journey work today? Oh my goodness, possibly. <laughs> Since I'm feeling a lot better and in the world, maybe, and not feeling like a mundane human today. Um, let's see, does 9010 quantum enter technology blend with your tools? Um, so Merle, I am not sure what this, uh, this energy tool is that you're speaking of, but yes, absolutely. Any subtle energy tools at all and modalities will harmonize perfectly with the tensor fields. The tensor fields will either, what the tensor fields do with other energy devices, modalities, organite, whatever it is, radionics, is that they will basically hold a space that will 
harmonize anything that is maybe non-beneficial or not harmonic uh, that, that's more chaotic within the energy of that tool but not but that is only one thing that it'll do is kind of harmonize that tool to make sure that it's beneficial but all the beneficial aspects of that tool it will amplify they'll actually amplify each other um, you know it's kind of like taking a crystal and you're using a crystal for healing and you have all these great energies from it and you add it to a tensor field and these two are going to actually amplify each other um, all the beneficial qualities of them will so yeah you can totally use the tools with any energy devices out there well, let's see so here's a comment i've placed three quantum grid points located in a triangular shape one to two hours apart at family locations. What can I expect or do as I, or do as intent? So when you set up the quantum grid points and you have three of them, you set them up at the, those family locations. Um, one thing when you put that, when you put the, uh, the grid point there and it created that grid, you basically already had the heart-based soul intentions already there and established with that field plus the innate feel that these create anyway um so for me what i am seeing with this scenario that you have set up is, is basically that you are connecting a space that you are connecting all three of those spaces not necessarily working with the space in between them but that you are working with those three spaces in general because these will create you know like a home size field and so to me it seems like it is just a space where you guys all connect in a heart way um i guess well, there's been a few people jokingly saying that they have a pyramid and their friend has a pyramid and they're going to start working on nonverbal communication at a distance um and that's almost what it feels like is that it feels like it's just it's it's like bringing everybody into the same household is energetically heart based not junk based heart based is what that feels like to me um but you can set whatever your intentions are within that space where you've set these grid points you can go back and and you know put in your own conscious intentions into that space at any time you want so basically you just sit with your pyramid um you know go into the heart space and that way you're putting in, you know, whatever's in the highest and best for everybody. But you can put in whatever intentions you want into these, and it's only going to hold and broadcast those that are in the highest and best anyway. Um, so really, you can put whatever intentions you wish into here. And what is in the highest and best will basically hold that space for that. So it's kind of like programming it. all right so and then uh going on to ask also about this question is um about the space within so within that triangular space it is going to be holding you know everything that these fields hold that that ascension field holds it holds that that field of healing um and it holds that that field of neutrality well it's not like the field of neutrality is just like there and covering everything it's more like that field of neutrality is there and accessible um is what that is and that's the same with that field of healing is is that if everybody within that space um if nobody is trying to draw in healing or if you know anything like so let's say for the healing field nobody's trying to draw in healing it's probably not going to have any effect on them. It is for those who are actually either doing the work that are connected or that are asking for the healing work, then that space is going to be there for them. Um, but it's not going to change and affect greatly those who don't want to connect. Um, it's not going to cause any connections for those who don't want to connect um it's just going to be holding a space for those who want to utilize that space not consciously because most people won't even know that that you're holding that space for them 
Um, so then also the question about those quantum grid points is, so the property we own within that triangle, so property we own within that triangle is more property we own. Um, well, basically, yeah, anything within that triangle, all the property, every space within that triangle, um, yeah, you're going to, that's going to be covered. Um, and if I, if you need clarification, please do ask. Um, will you share the work your pendant is doing with us? Oh, sure. So I love Larimar. Larimar puts like this nice watery bubble around me. So I always have Larimar when I'm, you know, out doing speaking engagements, things like that, but I've been just wearing it. Um, <laughs> it's been really chaotic. <laughs> I've been going through a lot of crap and the little quantum healers, you know, I figured maybe if I wear a few more extra, it might help. <laughs> but, you know, I, I love the quantum healers a lot, these little guys. Um, and so actually, I just wear extras because every once in a while, I'll hand one out to somebody, you know, that really needs it or is just, you know, really enthused by the energetics from the pendants when they see me i'll just end in one of these guys so that's also why i wear a few extra around um but the quantum healers i really do swear that the quantum healers help to begin a shift for me greatly into a lot more peace because it's been you know past few years i've just been working double shifts you know seven days a week and um it's just been chaotic and I don't know. It's just been nice to have a little peace in the world instead of all the chaos. So anyway, my, my pen is really not doing that much extra. It's just that I happen to really love the quantum healers. Um, let's see. So James asking, can I use the tensor field generator to cleanse and clear my crystals? Oh yes, totally Jane. So the, the tensor field generators, whether you have the golden fire generator that has to stay upright because you know you don't want to collapse these ones because it bends them out of shape you can simply put the crystal inside or if you have a larger crystal you can put this on top of the crystal and that's fine too and it only takes a few seconds to um, energetically clear a crystal now you can leave the crystal within the generator for longer or a ring whichever let's see so you have the generator so you can leave the crystal within the generator or a collapsed generator if you have the harmony or the 222 you can also leave the crystal inside of there like that um, if you leave the crystal in there for a couple hours it will do more work with the crystal um, but then for the generators if you have the generators um, into a spherical form and you have the crystal inside then it's going to be broadcasting the energetics and information of the crystal out so yeah using the generators with crystals is really a phenomenal thing to do um oh and i already answered your question <laughs> sorry i was a little slow there so robert my organite pyramid is more egyptian then Brian's more Mayan pyramid. Yeah, Robert, our pyramids, um, we're actually using the 60 degree angle. Um, the Egyptian pyramids are connected to an earth grid. They, the, that is the earth grid. I mean, that was the earth grid that we, that we used to hold us into third density reality. That is what, you know, the Egyptian pyramids are doing. And, and we're doing. Um, then the 60 degree pyramids are a lot different, you know, and yeah, they, you, it, it's a whole different critter. And, you know, I'm actually going to stop calling these guys organite pyramids, too. They're no longer going to be orgone. There's going to be simply crystal epoxy pyramids. Um, just because they're not really truly organite, they don't have enough metal in them. And besides, it's not. It's not the orgone energy that is making these guys function. So um, let's see. I think 
we may be done. And yeah, totally, Malik. We could do some journey work. Um, not sure what to do for journey work. We've done quite a bit of stuff in here for, for journey work. Um, nothing's new as of right now, but it can at least take you into a space um, if you'd like to follow along in the meditation. So we'll go ahead and jump into a meditation then. All right. Here we go. You may close your eyes if you wish. For me, going into the heart space and doing the energy work, I just like to have my eyes closed. So, with your eyes closed and your attention is on your physical heart, and the light from your heart is expanded down and it is connected to the light of the earth, we breathe that light right up into our heart. That light, that love, that energy from the earth. Next, we connect to source, soul, creator, God. We breathe in that energy of creation. The third breath we breathe in from earth and sky, bringing both those energies together within the heart. As your breath out, that light expands as a column. So you are grounded, connected, and in the heart. So you have that golden heart, or however you see it as that. To me, I see it as just this golden color, that color of the soul's light. Next, let's put our attention to the quantum heart. The quantum heart is simply a spherical form outside of the body where the sacred space, the heart, it sits right in the physical heart inside. The quantum heart sits outside of the body and it sits right outside of the sternum. So kind of right outside of the solar plexus. If you take your hands and you make, pretend you're making this golden ball of light. So just hold your hands like this. Bring them out in front of the heart and see your sacred heart just filling this sphere. So let's just create this golden sphere of light. Now then we hold that right there where the quantum heart will be. Where the, where the quantum heart is on you. And if you move your hands up and down to where you can position that ball of light right outside of your solar plexus there, right outside of your sternum where it just feels right. As soon as you have that space held, just hold your hands there. Now let's take a deep breath in and let's draw in that energy of earth, that energy of creation and your light all into this ball. And you're just filling up that ball of light. And that ball is the quantum heart. It is connected to you and your light. It is connected to the earth and the light of the earth. And it is connected to creation. That quantum heart is basically the same that you find within the quantum grid point pyramids. It is a little ball of light that is connected with the earth. So with that quantum heart, It is like the sacred space, the heart, in that it contains your light. So it has, you know, it's part of you. But the quantum part, just the quantum heart just contains more of what you are, more of your light. Um, so it's an expansive version of the sacred space of the heart is what this quantum heart is. Just play with it. Um, see how you can use it. See if you can expand it out. See if you can maybe pull energy from it to put on places for yourself. Remember, when we do work, we always do the work for ourselves first. 
So before you start taking that quantum heart and you start sending it out into the world, do everything for you and your world first, then work on your family. Then you can start to expand that out into the world. And there's no instructions for this quantum heart. We really don't know. We know that it is another step. Um, so play with that quantum heart. And, you know, perhaps you have a loved one that you want to do healing for. So after you've done all your healing for your physical, mental, emotional life situation, you worked on your family, then take that little ball and maybe send that to your Aunt Martha in Missouri or wherever and just visualize your quantum heart or it's not even yours. It, it, it belongs to you, but it belongs to the universe too. Send that quantum heart to them and just visualize, imagine that they are within that ball of light of that quantum heart um, that carries so much with it and it can do wonderful things. And don't worry about sharing um, your quantum heart energy with anybody else or the world. One, that is an unlimited energy source. It comes from creation. It comes from the earth. It comes from your unlimited light. So don't worry about sharing that. Um, and don't worry about sharing it. Don't worry about it being tainted. This light that we are playing with is uncorruptible. This is uncorruptible light, you guys. That is the spaces that we are going into now. Is we are stepping out of this whole duality matrix and we are stepping into where things are uncorruptible. And that is what that quantum heart is. That's what all of our tools are. And that's what you can be too. If you just stand in that light. Well, Thank you guys. Enjoy and we'll see you soon.